الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد رسول الله المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان وهدى إلى يوم الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل وألهمنا رشدنا يا رب العالمين الحمد لله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has manifested his mercy upon his creation in many ways. The very act of creating us is an expression of mercy. And the nature of how Allah has created things is an expression of divine mercy. Every aspect of existence expresses divine mercy. And then for believers, if we look at the nature of what Allah has made us responsible for, the guidance that He sent us, and what's the consequence of guidance, it is all mercy. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa. The encompassingly merciful is established on the throne. The throne that encompasses all of existence. Allah has manifested Himself to all of existence by his quality of encompassing mercy. And then in the days of our lives, there are times that Allah has facilitated for us as means of attaining Allah's mercy. Of the most blessed of times of the year is Ramadan, of course. But leading up to Ramadan are two months that are also particularly blessed. The month of Rajab that was just complete and this month that we have entered, the month of Sha'ban. The Prophet Sallallahu from his dua used to be, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban. Oh Allah bless us in Rajab and Sha'ban. Wa balighna Ramadan. And make us reach Ramadan. But when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing, what is blessing? What is barakah? They say, barakah to sirru ziyada wal izdiyad. Barakah is this, the subtle meaning of Allah giving increase. Right? Is Allah giving increase? It's like, it's extra. But to truly benefit, there's something that needs to come from you. What comes from you? When we're asking Allah, Allah bless us. In Rajab, Allah bless us in Sha'ban. If we're asking that sincerely, then there's something we need to do, which is to pursue the means of attaining blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are the means to the blessing of Allah? It's to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan by beginning on all those matters that we pursue in the month of Ramadan. With only a month left, with less than a month left in Ramadan, we have to start planning that what do I need to begin in this month so that I reach Ramadan in a blessed state. So that I reach Ramadan in a blessed state. And of the, the best things that you can do to prepare yourself for the month of Ramadan is Seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of the best things you can do is to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what is seeking forgiveness? Seeking forgiveness, istighfar, is a reminder for us of the tremendous mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the nature of Allah is that He is merciful. His mercy is waiting for us. All we have to do is to seek it. All we have to do is to seek that mercy. Allah is merciful to all His creation. But some of them turn to that mercy and others turn away from that mercy. And how do you knock at the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? All you have to do is seek forgiveness and repent. And His mercy 
is waiting for you. The Prophet ﷺ himself, the most beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, the greatest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, the most perfected of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, he tells us that by Allah, I seek Allah's forgiveness and repent to Him 70 times a day in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and in, the, in another hadith in Sahih Muslim, a hundred times a day. The Sahaba even more so mentioned that sometimes we'd be sitting with the Prophet wasallam, and in just one gathering, we would hear him making istighfar more than 70 times just in one gathering. And this is despite Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exalting the Prophet sallallahu beyond sin. The Prophets, one of their necessary qualities is al-isma, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects and preserves His Prophets and Messengers from any sin or disobedience. Yet despite that, despite that divine protection and honoring, the Prophet ﷺ would seek forgiveness. Why? One of the reasons is to teach us that if the greatest of Allah's creation, the most noble of Allah's creation, the most worshipful of Allah's creation, the most pleasing of Allah's creation, if his state and practice was that he's always seeking Allah's forgiveness, then what about us? What about us in our sinful ways, in our heedlessness, in our shortcomings? Should we not seek Allah's forgiveness? Should we not seek Allah's forgiveness? And he told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Allah loves those who seek His forgiveness, those who repent to Him, those who seek His forgiveness and repent to Him. And this is one of the ways that if we want to ready ourselves for the month of Ramadan, one of the particularly praiseworthy practices in this month leading up to Ramadan is to adopt a routine of istighfar, of seeking forgiveness. For example, if it's from the Sunnah to say, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. I seek Allah's forgiveness and I repent to Him. And from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that when we repent from our, mis from our sins, when we repent from our wrong, there are no other conditions to it. There are no other conditions to it except a remorseful heart. Except a remorseful heart. You mean it. <laughs> Repentance is remorse. So you just, say, you just feel bad about it, that, oh, oh Lord, I'm sorry. And Allah accepts. <laughs> Who is there to forgive sins except Allah? This is a tremendous gift of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you read the Quran itself, it tells you about how past people had to act if they had sinned. There's all kinds of expiations required and all kinds of things for your repentance to be accepted by Allah. But you don't have to do anything except have remorse and seek Allah's forgiveness. And this is a tremendous gift. So clean your heart, polish your heart, purify your life through this gift of seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Try to have a routine each day of saying astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. And you can make a general repentance. You don't have to enumerate every sin that you've committed. <laughs> you can intend that I'm seeking Allah's forgiveness and repenting to Him from every wrong that I have ever committed. Even if there are sins that you commit that you know you're stuck with, you know that they've become bad habits, you struggle to leave them. Even then, if you repent from it with remorse, you feel bad, you've disobeyed Allah, you feel bad about it, you're stuck in the sin. Even if you 
repent and then mess up again and repent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts. There are no conditions with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and His forgiveness. You have to be sincere. You have to be sincere. You have to be striving to change. But you are not expected to be perfect. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabeen. Truly, Allah loves the oft-repentant. Who are the oft-repentant? It's been explained in prophetic tradition from our beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi The oft-repentant are those who when they commit a sin, they regret and they repent to Allah and He forgives them. And then they may fall into the sin again by weakness or error or heedlessness and they repent again with remorse and Allah forgives them. And the very fact that they don't accept their shortcomings and they keep turning back to Allah is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not a prisoner to your bad habits. Don't accept them. Don't accept them. You know you're struggling with them. But say, that, oh Allah, I want to be pleasing to you. Oh Allah, I want your closeness. Oh Allah, I want to be beloved to you. I, I know I'm weak, but I seek your forgiveness. I repent to you. So part of that seeking of forgiveness is to reflect. What do I need to change in my life? What are the things that are displeasing to Allah? And as you make istighfar, you intend to seek forgiveness and repent from all your sins, but also be reflecting. What do I need to change? What do I need to change? And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for assistance. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for assistance. And Allah loves the people who seek His forgiveness. The Prophet sallallahu mentions that Allah rejoices more in the repentance of His servant than a, than a man who was on a journey with his provision on their mount. And they went to rest by a tree. And when they woke up, their mount went away with their provision. And this is out in the desert with their food and drink and everything. The man looks around, can't see the animal. And there's no water nor food anywhere around in all four directions. So the man resigned. He goes, leans back against the tree, waiting for death. But what happens? He wakes up to the animal rubbing against him. So in that moment, right, he is so ecstatic that the man says something by mistake. He says, oh Allah, I'm your Lord and you're my servant. He wanted to say the opposite. And the Prophet said, This man made a mistake from the intensity of their rejoicing. Allah rejoices more at our repentance than that person who had given up on life. Because all their means had gone. But then they were reunited with, with them unexpectedly. Allah is waiting for us to repent. There is no conditions to that mercy. So we should hasten to accept that. Rejoice. One of the amazing things about our deen is that when we repent, we feel saddened, of course, by our sin. We feel saddened by our shortcomings. We feel saddened by our heedlessness. We feel saddened by how far we are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we rejoice. We rejoice in Allah's mercy and favor. Repentance to Allah is a return to Allah. So when we repent, when we seek forgiveness, we feel bad about the way we are. But we also feel a sense of rejoicing in the mercy and favor of Allah. That we're dealing with the most generous Lord. So when we say Astaghfirullah, it's not like, I'm a loser, I'm a loser, I'm a loser. No. When we say Astaghfirullah, you're saying, I seek the forgiveness of Allah, who is the merciful. Who is Ar-Rahman? He is Ar-Rahim. He is Al-Kareem. He is the most generous. He is Al-Wadud. He is the caring. So you're full of hope when you repent. You're full of confidence in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's adopt a commitment to seek forgiveness in this month and to rejoice in the favors of Allah. Sometimes we imagine right, wrongfully 
Because our deen has teaching. It has halal and haram and limits. But we are not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not deal with us on the basis of being a judge. He deals with us on the basis of mercy. Which is why the state of the believer is one of gratitude and rejoicing. The Prophet used to say, Should I not be a servant who is truly thankful? Should I not be a servant who is truly thankful? The Prophet was always full of concerns. He had the concerns of all creation on his shoulders. He was a serious man, yet he was always cheerful. Why was he cheerful? He was re his heart was ever rejoicing with his Lord. And we have to adopt that. We have to adopt that. Recognize the vastness of Allah's favors and rush to Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who never despair. Even if we mess up. Ya ladina asrafu ala anfusihim. Allah commands the Messenger وسلم, to tell us in the Quran that say, my, Oh my servants who have totally transgressed against themselves, asrafu ala anfusihim, who have completely messed up. Never despair of the mercy of Allah. Never despair of the mercy of Allah. Because Allah truly forgives all sins. Truly it is He who is the all-forgiving and most merciful. That's the nature of our Lord. All we have to do is knock on the door. And we'll realize the door is already open. The door is already open. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts to seeking forgiveness, to repentance and return, to rejoicing in the mercy and bounty of Allah. Say, in the bounty of Allah and in His mercy, in that let them rejoice. It is far better than all that they amass. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَصَفِّرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَصَفِّرُهُ إِنَّهُ مَقْرُونَ الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد نبي الرحمة وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا the Prophet ﷺ gave us a whole number of ways of asking Allah for forgiveness and repentance. One of the things that each of us should reconnect with is the sunnah, du'as and adhkar. So in preparing for the month of Ramadan, just as we re-establish our routines of Qur'an or improve our routines of Qur'an, inshallah we all recite the Qur'an every day. We should. If we don't have a daily routine, we should restart it. If we have a daily routine, we should take it up a notch as we gear up for Ramadan. But we should also reconnect with the sunnah, <coughs> adhkar, and du'as. And there's many excellent collections of the dhikrs, of the acts of remembrance, and the supplications, the ad'iyah of the Prophet ﷺ. We should reconnect with them. And one of the areas that we should look at as we prepare spiritually for the month of Ramadan are the many different ways that the Prophet ﷺ taught us to seek forgiveness. And there's a whole number of them that the Prophet ﷺ encouraged to say a hundred times a day, for example. And this is one of the practices we should try to adopt. That by morning and by night, after every prayer, Say, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. I seek Allah's forgiveness and I repent unto Him. And this is a means of clearing one's record with Allah, renewing one's commitment to go the right way. But we'll close just by one thing to reflect upon. Then why did the Prophet ﷺ seek forgiveness <laughs> when he did no sin? He is protected by, by Allah from sin. <laughs> One of the explanations is because the Prophet ﷺ always felt that Allah deserves better. Because he was always rising in rank with Allah. 
And whatever he did, he felt that Allah deserves yet better. So he considered what he did previously to be insufficient with respect to what Allah deserves. Because the absolute deserves absolutely <coughs> everything. But there's another meaning that istighfar is not just saying, Oh Allah, forgive my sins. Istighfar is an amazing concept. Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, explains. Ghafr has a sense of covering and protecting. A shield is called a mighfar. But the shield has two aspects. A shield protects you and covers you from harm. But it also adorns you. It adorns you. It completes your state. That's why people have you know, use their shield as their badge. Who are you? So in that sense, istighfar has two roles. Istighfar is not just seeking forgiveness. Istighfar, Imam al-Ghazali explains this, سَتْرُ الْقَبِيحِ وَإِظْهَارُ الْجَمِيلِ Istighfar is asking Allah to cover in you all that is unbecoming and to manifest in you all that is beautiful, all that is pleasing to Him. And we should have that meaning in mind when we say, Astaghfirullah wa atubillah. I seek Allah's forgiveness. Oh Allah, cover in my life all that is ugly in my actions and conduct and character and state and manifest all that is beautiful and pleasing to you. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of this people of seeking forgiveness, of the people whom Allah accepts in their forgiveness. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us and the ummah of the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa all those who hasten to return to him in forgiveness and in rectifying our actions and states. Allahumma khfir lana wa lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwad rabbana innaka qareebun sami'un mujib al da'wat ya arham al rahimin Allahumma arhamna wa arham ummata Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma tajawaz an ummati Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma adfa an ummati Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi shatta anha'i al-alam mahalla bihim من ظلم وقحط وجور يا رب العالمين اللهم أبدل عسرهم يسرا يا كريم وانصرهم على أعدائهم يا نعم المعين يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم ردنا والمسلمين إلى دينك وسنة نبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم ردا جميلا اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار يا قوي يا غفار يا لطيف يا ستار يا رب العالمين اللهم ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما وصلي وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد نبي الرحمة وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة